Welcome to another episode of AgriTalk and thank you for keeping it Katie and Farmers TV. Today we are talking about we are talking matters aquaculture and with me today is uh, Julie M M Muyela who is a direct uh, associate director at Lattice. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show uh, Julie. Thank you. Tell us a little about yourself and uh, who is Lattice. Thank you very much for having me today. Um, so Lattice is a, an advisory firm uh, that uh, specializes in uh, corporate finance, strategy development advisory services, new market entry, mm -hmm. and we have a, a special, um, uh, uh, what is it called, subsidiary that's called Lattice Aqua, where I actually head. And at Lattice Aqua, we provide advisory services for aquaculture value chain and agribusiness value chain. So the services range from aquaculture value chain development, social and economic development uh, in aquaculture, um, aquaculture financial management, and, uh, and a few other uh, services around that. Okay. Yeah. So when we talk about aquaculture, what is aquaculture exactly? So aquaculture is basically this, it's, it's, it's all about fish farming. It's all about um, anything around fish, right? So looking at the entire value chain for, 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 for fish, all the way from production to the market. So anything that is within the particular uh, value chain uh, for fish is basically aquaculture. Okay. Yeah. So why is it important that we have this conversation about aquaculture? It's important because when you look at uh, Kenya, for example, um, FAO did a study a while back and uh, from their study they noticed that uh, we have around 1.14 million hectares um, of land that can be used for fish production. Okay. And with that land, we should be able to produce over 11 million metric tons of fish, which would come to around 750 billion worth of Kenya shillings. Um, which then, of course, would come to improving the economy. But that's not where we are at. We are way, f we are far, far away from that. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for us to have this discussion because we need to think about why is this particular sector not developing as fast as it should be? Okay. And uh, why, um, what are the things, what are the interventions that should come into play? And that's where my, uh, my company, Lattice, actually comes into play because as part of our Food Tech Africa program, we are aiming to improve food security through establishing and developing the aquaculture value chain within Africa. Um, so basically starting from Kenya and hopefully uh, transitioning to the rest of Africa. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about aquaculture mm -hmm. um, and production of fish as food, um, where does fish sit in, uh, on our plates in terms of uh, its importance? So fish is... It's a protein, right? So when you look at uh, all the other protein elements, it is, it, it, we can consider it a rich protein. Um, you know, when you look at the health benefits, the, you know, the low fat, the amino acids, and every other benefit that it comes with, it is a white meat, and it's therefore considered a really rich protein. And so when you think about it in our plate, it should be one of the main components of our plate. Okay. Yeah. So why do you think it has taken us this long uh, to develop this sector if it's this important? That's a very good question. Um, so let me take a step back, you know, and, and looking at uh, the economic stimulus program that the government rolled out in 2009. The objective of that was to really take off um, and to develop the aquaculture um, sector within Kenya. And if you, if you look at the, the, the development that came up from that, it, it wasn't as, as great as expected. And why was that? Um, when you look at, um, at the aquaculture farmers, most of them do not really look at it from a commercial perspective. There is a need for uh, a clear strategic direction on how to take it up, right? So the fact that um, it may not necessarily have succeeded and and enabled the sector develop as fast as it was it's not a bad thing because we have lessons that we've learned from it and therefore as a result of those lessons it's more taking those lessons which have resulted to new projects coming up okay. so when you look at those new projects um, what are the things that we are doing that is different so we need to have a commercial mindset when you're looking at aquaculture um, sector so not just thinking about it from a, a food production perspective without necessarily um, thinking about the sustainability of the businesses that are actually doing the farming 
or the sustainability of the market uh, ac across the, 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 the country and, and even in East Africa. Okay. So, yeah. So when we talk about the market, for a very long time, uh, fish consumption was um, a preserve of a particular part of the country, mm -hmm. particular corner. Um, could that be one of the issues why uh, this sector has taken this long to develop? So I, I, I would say yes and no. Um, so let me start with the no. Um, from, I think, the 1960s thereabout, there's been the whole eat more fish movement, you know, mm. the campaign that is moving from the, the societies that were previously considered the fish societies and moving to other societies. And I think as a result of that uh, Eat More Fish campaign, there has been a lot of communities coming on board uh, and a lot of societies actually taking it up. But then when you look at the supply and the demand, there is high demand, there is low supply. Why is there low, low supply of fish? One of the factors you can th we could think about is more so, you know, production costs, right? So when you look at uh, fish farming and you look at the production, uh, the production types of fish farming, you have pond, you have cages, and you have the recirculation aquaculture system, RAS. If you look at it and you do the economics around it, um, the most successful and the most productive one would be RAS, but it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the production costs, you're looking at the cost of, um, you know, if you think about cost of feed, cost of seeds, that being fingerlings, you know, just the cost of the capital investment that goes into it. It's not, um, it's not attractive to many people because they, they, they we, unfortunately, most of us think short term. So thinking about the initial investment rather than the long term effect of the, of the particular um, production type. Uh, so that could be another reason why it actually hasn't taken off as, as, as fast as it should be. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Also for a long time, we've really relied on, um, fish that mm -hmm. is found uh, naturally in the wild. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, we can still con we can continue relying on the fish that are found um, naturally in our lakes and rivers? So uh, unfortunately, the, 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 there is a huge reduction of wild fish. And the reasons of that are, you know, we've overfished. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, the natural resources are getting depleted. You know, there is pollution. There is uh, climate change. So looking at the available fish the wild fish right now vis-a-vis -vis the demand it's quite quite low and therefore it, you cannot place high reliance on 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 the wild fish anymore and and that's why most people are now actually moving to fish farming which is proving to be very successful if you do it right okay yes um you've talked about two major issues pollution and climate change mm -hmm. let's start with pollution how bad is it so let's Let's not move there. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Next. <laughs> okay, okay. So in terms of um, the kind of fish that is available yes. in this country, which are the, um, uh, the most available varieties and which one uh, is the most consumed and why? So if you look at the two most popular types are tilapia and, and catfish. So actually tilapia is uh, the most predominant one. Um, and I think it also comes down to the preference, right? So there is, first of all, um, if you look at the production of tilapia, it's actually, it's more intensive than the production of catfish. But then it all comes down to the preference, um, you know, people's taste buds and what have you. So it, it, um, I, I believe that uh, uh, tilapia is, is more consumed than catfish, even though catfish is, uh, you know, pr uh, producing it is actually easier. Than tilapia. Okay. Yeah. So if I want to start uh, an aquaculture venture, what do I need to know? Ha! Huh, that's a very good question. I think it's pretty much the same as any venture that you want to undertake, right? Um, what is uh, what's your what what is the reason why you want to undertake it? You know, what we are what we are trying to um, the message that we're trying to bring across um, as part of uh, Lattice and you know, with our new aquaculture academy that we just launched the other day, is when you're thinking about aquaculture, you need to think about it from a sustainable perspective. Don't just think about it as a, um, what is it called, like a hobby, right? Because the, the, the efforts and the costs that you need up front are high. And so if you're not thinking about it from a sustainable, commercially viable perspective, 
then it's not going to work. So just like any business, you need to think about, first of all, do you have the capital, right? Where are you going to get the capital from? Do you have a business model? What, how do you want this to look like? So for aquaculture, for example, what do you want to, what kind of production facility do you want to undertake? Do you, do you want to go down the rust route? Do you want to set up cages? Do you want to set up ponds? Where do you want to set them, right? So temperature is very critical when you're thinking about aquaculture. So if you're thinking about setting up a pond um, in a place that's not um, warm enough, because tilapia is, <laughs> tilapia is a very um, picky animal, right? Mm -hmm. So it requires a lot of um, attention, especially with, with regards to temperature, water quality, and what have you. So have you thought about the environment? Have you thought about the temperature? Have you thought about the market? So before you set up a, a, a farm or even a, any business, like what's your market? How does your market look like? Um, where are you going to get the qualified staff? Because you need qualified staff to actually help you run it. So it's not, it's not like, uh, you know, like buying a couple of fingerlings, putting them in the water and expecting them to thrive and get fish at the end of, the, of a production cycle. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that you need to think about. And then, of course, coupling it all up with the financial model. So how do you see your costs? What are the costs that you expect to incur? And then how are you going to finance those costs? Okay. Yeah. Um, from what you've just mentioned, uh, I'm trying to imagine if I've never done this before, where do I get all this information? That's a very good question. So Aquaculture Academy. So, so allow me to just take you back. Mm -hmm. um, so Lattice has been in this space from 2012. So it started, um, the, our journey started, you know, with just having a conversation with a farmer who actually told us that he'd been doing farming for a while, but it wasn't profitable. So he didn't really understand why it wasn't profitable. And when you look at the Lake Victoria region, uh, we would expect that, you know, there is a lake, you know, we have wild fish, we should have enough supply to meet the demand. And so as a result of that, um, a consortium of 19 private and public companies, both uh, in Netherlands, uh, Dutch and, and, and Kenyan companies was formed, and that was Food Tech Africa. And so when Food Tech Africa was formed, our main objective was basically to improve food security through establishing the aquaculture, uh, a fully integrated aquaculture value chain. And so we have gone through the journey from 20, uh, 2012, you know, with a, a few success stories, um, you know, uh, setting up various aquaculture hubs, you know, in Kenya, one in Kenya, which is Kamuthanga, one in Tanzania, mm -hmm. and then one in Rwanda, as, as, as also, you know, setting up a feed mill, uh, which is Unga. And now we are at the stage where, you know, in the last couple of years, we've always realized that one thing is missing, and that's human skilled capital. And so at the tail end of the Food Tech Africa program, we've now realized we really need to set up an aquaculture academy where people will come in and not just get the theory, it's more a vocational practical training school. So if you want that kind of information, then come and join us at Aquaculture Academy. Okay. Um, any qualifications for me to, to join the, the well, academy? <laughs> You don't necessarily have to have an aquatic uh, science, uh, what is it called, um, degree. Because mm -hmm. there's so many people right now who are undertaking uh, fish farming, but they don't necessarily have that background. So when you look at the, the courses that we intend to undertake, um, we are basically dividing it into three categories in terms of the trainees that we're going to bring on board. Uh, the first category is actually fish farmers and, and their staff. So they already have uh, an idea of, of fish farming. So some of them are already successful. They're already undertaking commercially viable businesses. Some of them are struggling because they don't have that uh, technical know-how, the practicality of it and all. Um, so that's the first group. So I don't know whether you fall into the first group. But then, so the second group is trainers and extension officers. So we're not just training people who are going to be doing the fish farming, but people who are going to disseminate the information downwards, right? So for extension offices, for example, we expect this information to trickle down to the various counties and the farmers within the counties. Um, for trainers, um, we could have trainers who have been funded by, you know, donors to probably go ahead and improve the livelihoods of, you know, the society that they're actually operating in, 
or even lecturers, you know, just uh, upping up their skills as far as uh, aquaculture is concerned. And then the last group that we have is actually graduates or um, uh, students now, you know, those who are in school at the moment, in mm -hmm. universities, institutions of higher learning, who are studying courses around aquaculture. So they could be, they could have already graduated, but so they need uh, to have additional practical skills from an internship perspective for them to, to be able to graduate. Okay. Um, so it could be an attachment or, or, or something like that. So those are the three groups. So you don't necessarily have to have that background of aquaculture. We've, we've had a lot of inquiries in the last couple of uh, months mm -hmm. where people have come to us and said, we really, we know we went into this venture, fish farming venture, without necessarily having the technical know-how. And we have paid significant price for it. You know, not in a good way, like mm -hmm. huge losses. And so we want to take a step back and come back and learn what are the things we are doing wrong. How can we then improve going forward? Okay. Yes. I think I'm one of the victims of that. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll go into that later yeah. on. Uh, in terms of making uh, business sense out of it, uh, you, earlier on you talked about looking for where you're going to sell it first and working it uh, backwardly. So if, just like me, who woke up one day and thought, why don't I try fish? Mm -hmm. And I will build a pond and I got some fingerlings and they all died the next day. Um, as a country, have we um, educated our people enough about uh, these resources called aqua, um, fish and aquaculture? So, in my opinion, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe we have done a good job. So yes, we have the technical learnings, right? Uh, we have the higher institutions, we have the TVETs that, um, you know, teach on aquaculture and the related sciences around it. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the viability of the businesses and how to actually run a business that's going to be sustainable, um, I feel that is lacking. And, um, you know, for the last uh, couple of years, when through the Food Tech Africa program that we've actually undertaken, we trained over 1,200 uh, people who would actually, and it was not necessarily structured uh, trainings where we would, we would invite people. We already had a curriculum, right? But it was more people coming into our commercial firms, uh, say Kamuthanga, for example, and saying, we really want to learn what, how, how is Kamuthanga a farm that is in Machakos actually surviving? How is it doing well while my pawns in, uh, you know, Kisumu are really struggling, you know? And so it was coming in, using our curriculum, showing them the gaps, you know, why, why some things are not working. And that, that is mainly done through a practical element of it, right? So you can have all the technical know-how, you can have all the theory, but that's not going to take you to the next level with regards to making your business sustainable. So for us, that is our key, our key focus at, uh, at the academy. And it's more building aquapreneurs who are going to have profitable and sustainable businesses going forward. We really do not want um, to have people come through the academy and then, you know, a few months, a few years down the road, we realize that, you know, their businesses did not succeed. Then we would have failed. As, as, as an institution. Okay. Yeah. Even as you build the aquapreneurs that you've just mentioned, um, the biggest challenge for anyone, uh, especially the young people, is has always been capital. Um, and I believe you don't have to start so big. Mm -hmm. So is there a, a threshold somewhere where uh, someone can start with a particular number of fish that will make business sense? So, so that's a good question, um, and, and, and it comes down to the production type. Now, unfortunately, um, a production type like grass, <laughs> it's heavy, heavy initial investment uh, because of the whole technology that goes into it. Um, we've, done, we've done a couple of business cases, you know, just to assess how many, what would it take for a business to be viable. Unfortunately, one pond, and even if you think about an earthen pond, one pond is not going to, it's not going to be profitable. Mm -hmm. The cost that you're going to incur when it comes to the cost of feeds, the cost of fingerlings, the, the, the labor that you require, right? 
vis-a-vis -vis the production that is coming out of your of your of your pond or one two three ponds um when you do the math it really doesn't add up so it requires um a lot of training on on business acumen it requires how what does it take for you to run a sustainable business and that's actually one of the courses that we we are we're going to be undertaking at the academy more so looking at the financial management around aquaculture um what what you need to understand your costs right you need to understand how do you monitor your costs how do you manage your costs where are you going to sell right because you can have all this production but if you don't have a target market then it's not going to it's not going to it's not going to be successful now unfortunately for 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 the for the sector because it's um uh, let me call it still an at, at its nascent stage um we 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 we've found out just from studies that we've undertaken before that financial institutions are shying away from from funding aqua uh, aqua aquapreneurs if if i could call them that fish farmers um and it's more so you know there is not enough information for for the banks or for the mfis or whatever financial institution to give them as, as, as much comfort as you have for like dairy or tea or coffee where there's already proven concepts that 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 have actually you know been been shared with the banking the, the financial institutions and so that initial financing is very critical it's a challenge getting it and that's why we feel looking at this from a, a, a an ecosystem perspective where we're not just saying come in get trained it's more about let's think about the ecosystem right where you're going to get your feeds where you're going to get your fingerlings do we need an off taker someone who's going to introduce you to the market who's going to buy from you and then take you to the market how do we make you um investor ready from a, a you know an, a, an access to finance perspective so those are some of the things that we'll actually be looking at um in the academy as well okay um you you you've talked about uh the cost of production yes and one of the highest uh, things that always uh, keep the, uh, the cost of production up there is uh, the feed are there ways that I can keep my um, cost of feed down so so let's look at at uh, the cost of feed from the value side right from the from the uh, we, we, we call it food conversion ratio so so the amount of feed that you give a fish vis-a-vis uh, you know the weight and how much you're gonna sell it at that that is how we would look at it in in aqua and um, One of the ways You know we always say cheap is expensive in the long run, mm -hmm. right? So so most farmers believe that you know uh, Let me buy cheap because at the end of the day it's fish But fish are very very picky especially tilapia mm -hmm. and so if you give the your your fish the wrong type of feed then you don't expect your food conversion ratio to be ideal. Mm -hmm. Then it affects your production, right? So it's, it's more about investing in the right quality and also knowing the right amount to feed the fish, right? Because yes, you can have the right quality, but if you don't have uh, an awareness of the right um, quali uh, quantity, to give a fish at the various stages all the way from finger lengths to outgrowers mm. then your it impedes your the, the growth of the fish which then affects your your production and the, the the amount of revenue that you're going to 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 yield at the end of the day okay yeah okay julie um i think we'll take a short commercial break and when we come back we'll continue this conversation for those joining us at home uh today we are talking about aquaculture and what you need to know if you want to venture into uh, fish farming. And uh, uh, Julie M M Muyela is here today to, to educate us on that. Uh, we are taking a short commercial break, but we will be back shortly.